All right, we're going to try and get two examples done. Are you ready? Here we go. Here's this function. Based on this graph, at what values of x does will g have a horizontal tangent, you guys? So here's the key for this um, for this example. Give a reason. Check. Ready? Rewrite g of x. So g of x is equal to 2 times x to the 1 half. So that's square root. You either have it memorized, the derivative, or you're still doing this. I'm showing all the work, okay? g prime, 1 half times 2. Those divide out, and we get x to the negative 1 half, because you have to subtract 1, minus 1. It's our derivative. Yes? Should we rewrite it? I think so. It's going to be 1 over the square root of x minus 1. Now, because it says find a horizontal tangent line, this is our next step. Solve g prime equals 0. Here's g prime, and we're going to set it equal to 0. All right, how do we solve for that? Well, we're going to add 1, and we get 1 over the square root of x equals 1. Now, we can't solve for x when it's in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by the square root of x. And I'm going to move over here. 1 equals the square root of x. Okay. Well, the square root of what is 1? You can square both sides, and you see that x equals positive 1. And what's happening at x equals 1? The derivative is 0, and the derivative of 0 means there's a horizontal tangent line. What's your justification? There is a horizontal tangent line. at x equals 1 because that is where g prime of x equals 0, derivative equals 0. What do you think? Does our graph, um, does our graph confirm that at x equals 1? Do you see there? Do we have, what would you call that? Would you call that a relative max or a relative minimum? It's a relative max, right? And you agree the tangent line's horizontal there? Fantastic. Okay. On what intervals is g prime less than 0? Give a reason for your answer. g prime is 0 less, sorry, what does this mean? This means that g, what am I doing? g prime of x is less than 0 means g is decreasing. G is decreasing on the interval. Okay, where is G decreasing? From 1 to infinity. On the interval from 1 to infinity. Okay. 7. On what intervals is the derivative greater than 0? Do you see how I like, re that was repetitive? Come on, lights. I'm going to try and make it into one sentence, okay? G is G. First the lights, then the bell, then I mess up. Here, let me fix this g prime of x is greater than 0 when g is increasing according to the graph this occurs from oh you guys said you you like this way better from x is greater than 0 to 1, okay, on the interval from 0 to 1. For what values of x, is this a new question, is the slope of the tangent line, well that's g prime, equal to 2? So does that mean plug in 2 for x? No, because we have to find x. 
for what values of x is the slope of the tangent line equal to 2. So we're going to take our derivative and set it equal to 2, and we need to find x. That's what it says right here. Okay, where's our g prime? Way up. Ooh, it's that weird thing. Okay, 1 over the square root of x minus 1. Where is it equal to 2? Remember, we set it equal to 0. Now we just set it equal to 2. So we're going to, let's see here, add 1. 1 over the square root of x equals 2 plus 1 is 3. We can't solve for x when it's in the denominator, so we're going to bring it up to both sides and those divide out. And over here I have 1 equals 3 square root x. Next step, we got to get x by itself, so we're going to divide by 3. And how do I get rid of the square root? We're going to square both sides, yes? And there are the lights, let it focus, hold on. All right, we squared both sides, so we have x equals 1 ninth. x equals 1 ninth. Does that make sense? Well, let's look at our graph. 1 ninth is really tiny right here. Does that look like it could be a slope of 2? Yeah, it does. That's it. Okay. Find the equation of the tangent line drawn to the graph of g when x equals 4. Then draw the tangent, tangent line on the grid above. All right. So first we have to find g prime of 4. See how every question is asking us to do something different? We kind of have to figure out what to do, whereas on number 8 we solved for x, but on number 9 we're plugging in x equals 4. So we just have to, you know, be careful and pay attention to details. All right. Square root of 4, we know the square root of 4 is 2. 1 half minus 1 is equal to negative 1 half. And what did we just find there? That's the slope of the tangent line. Okay, slope of the tangent line, but we need a point. So what is g of 4? Careful on the graph. Is this a graph? Let's double check. Is this a graph of g or the derivative? Based on the graph, picture to the right is a graph of g. Yay, so we can get the coordinate point from the graph. So the coordinate point is 4, 2, the y value. So g of 4 is 2 and our equation of the tangent line, y minus 2 equals the slope of the tangent line. Let's make sure it said slope of the tangent line and not the normal line. Okay, x minus 4, then draw the tangent line on the grid above. Okay, draw the tangent line on the grid above. Remember the little trick I told you? Go to f We don't have to solve for y and do all that. Go to 4 and we know the slope is down 1 over 2. So here we are at 4. Should I pick another color? So at 4 we know the slope is down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, like that. And connect those dots with your ID card or a ruler or your chopsticks. And there we have the tangent line. Okay, that's that example. Let's move on. Ooh, I like these. Okay. Example three. Table of values below represents the values of the graph of the derivative. Be careful here, you guys. It's the derivative, not the original function. The zeros indicated in the table are the only zeros. Got it. The only zeros of the graph of the derivative. Here we go. On what intervals is the function h increasing and decreasing? Give reasons for your answer. Okay, we got it. we're using the same definition, so nothing new. We just have a val table of values. H is increasing when, you tell me what's the definition of something increasing, when the derivative is positive. Okay, so the derivative is here, and the derivative is positive. Now we're going from, do you see how the derivative is positive here? Well, it's zero and then it's negative, and then zero, and then negative. Okay, here's what I was wondering. Does it start at negative eight, or do we start at negative infinity? And the key is here. If it's a polynomial function, 
polynomial functions go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we're going to start at negative infinity. Okay. That was just the key there. Now, where is the derivative positive? The derivative is positive from negative infinity to negative 2, but we're not going to include negative 2 because at negative 2 it's 0. You see how this is positive? Positive, positive. Okay. H is decreasing when, well, what's your definition? When the first derivative is negative, right? So the derivative is negative, it occurs in the intervals. There's two intervals. So here, negative, 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 0, negative, negative. But watch where I get the x's from. It's going to be negative 2 to 7. And then we're not going to include the 7. And then from 7 to not 12, but we're actually going to go to positive infinity. OK? What's the other way to write that? From negative 2, x is greater than negative 2, but less than 7. And then, oh, hey, could we say all x is greater? What's, what's another way to do this? We could say x is greater than negative 2, but x does not include 7. It's another way, right? Cool. At what x value does the graph of h have a relative maximum, justify your answer, h have, has a relative maximum when h prime of x changes from, let me think, maximum, so from positive to negative, which occurs at, so where do we go from positive to negative? We have a zero here. So that's at x equals what? x equals negative 2. At what values does h have a relative minimum? Next one. h has a relative minimum when h prime changes from negative to positive. Okay. Positive, zero, positive, or sorry, negative, 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 zero, negative, negative. Does it ever go from negative to positive? Which occurs never. Never. Oops. All right. Good. We rock in this. Um, are we still using this? Ooh, if so this is our x value and a y value. If h of three equals two, interesting. What is the equation of the tangent line to the graph of h of x at x equals 3? Okay, so we have an x and we have a y value. We need a slope, you agree? So what is h prime of 3? Can't we just get that from the table? Because we have the table of the derivatives. So h prime of 3 is negative 3, which means the tangent line will be y minus y1. Wasn't that nice of them? They gave it, gave us the x to the y equals negative 3 times x minus 3. Cool. Uh, what's the equation of the normal line? So we just need a new slope. What's our new slope for the normal line? If the slope of the tangent line is negative 3, then the slope of the normal line will be positive 1 third. So our equation of the normal line, it's the same x and y value, you guys, same point. y minus 2 equals positive 1 third times x minus 3. Find the tangent line approximation. Okay, this was the new thing for this lesson. We're going to take, I'm running out of time here, you guys. So we're going to do 3.1 minus 3. You just plug it into the tangent line. Plug this into here. That's it. And you find the y value. 3.1 minus 3 is 0.1. So that's going to be negative 0.3 if you distribute that. And then when we add 2, what is 2 minus 0.3? Is that going to be 1.7? Okay, these we probably need help on, but um, the answers here, I'm just going to give them to you. Negative infinity, 
and also negative infinity, but I don't